Marco Antonio Lopez is at Tlaxcala, Mexico, about an hour east of Mexico City. Coming into the ring, a veteran fighter, 24 and 8, 15 KOs in his career. We appreciate all the tweets, love them. All as always, talking sports. That's a sweet setup you got going on right now. Loyal That's fan, by the way. Very loyal yes. Ring TV Live fan. <laughs> a sweet setup, surround sound. I want to get the speakers a little bit bigger because we're going to get loud in here, my man. And also Pancho Panteras. I know that's not your real uh, Twitter name, but I just like saying Pancho Panteras. Yeah. And there you go. And he's watching us as always. Appreciate everybody out there. Bethel Duran, Doug Fisher, and Steve Kim. The second fight of the Canelo Con card. And that's right. Go to CaneloCon.com and buy the pay-per-view. And now making his way to the ring from Lynn, Massachusetts. It's Speedy Rashidi Ellis, undefeated fighter, going with that white sequin. Looks smooth. I was Ooh. in the locker room with him. <laughs> and it's uh, green, white, and red for Rashidi Ellis out of Lynn, Massachusetts, near Boston. Asked him why the green, white, and red. Of course, I know it's Cinco de Mayo weekend. Mm -hmm. As you said, I got to represent. You know, go to Canelo camp. You got to wear the green, white, and red. Makes sense. And he Man. was. He is beaming. Yes, I mean, some is. guys no. come out with, like, enthusiastic. He's just got energy. Well, I think there's some impatience here. He yeah. literally had a lot of fights in 2014. Ten last year, 2015, only had one. Things like hurricanes, natural disasters, postponed one fight, uh, medical papers from his oppo opponent, nixed another guy. He actually yeah, got... He was, he was supposed to fight on the undercard of um, Luis Ortiz, Tony Thompson in Washington, D.C., and I don't know what happened. His, his, his fight was scrapped. Yeah. I was looking forward to watching him. That the medicals. Fight. Yeah, the medical. Okay. That fight, uh, he was ready to go in his locker room taped, and the medical for his opponent was not approved by the doctors. It Crazy. was just everything back. So, hey, you're warmed up. Uh, by the way, your opponent can't fight. But here he is in Las Vegas. His opponent is here. Took it on two weeks' notice. Mark Krisky, our ring announcer, is ready to go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada for this round of action. Our next fight is scheduled for eight super rounds of welterweight boxing. Presented by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions. Sponsored by Cerveza Tecate, Born Bold, O'Reilly Auto Parts, Better Parts, Better Prices Every Day, Casa Mexico Tequila, It's In The Taste. Doom, Fight Like Hell on May 13th, and Hands of Stone, the true story of Roberto Duran, starring Edgar Ramirez, Roberto, Robert De Niro, and Usher Raymond in theaters in August. And now, let's hear it for our next fighters. First of all, scoring the fight, judges seated ringside, Patricia Morse, Jamarn, David Moretti, and Ricardo Ocaso. Referee in charge of the action at the sound of the bell, Jay Natty. And now, ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of the blue corner with an official weight of 148.5 pounds, with a record of 24 wins, eight losses. 15 of those wins coming by way of knockout from Telexico, Mexico. Let's hear it for Marco Antonio Lopez. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, an official weight of 150 pounds, a perfect record of 14 wins, zero losses, 11 of those wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from Boston, Massachusetts, Rashidi Ellis. And once again, referee in charge of the action at the sound of the bell, Jay Nady. Eight rounds. Pocho. Touch gloves. Winner sweat that good luck. Let's go to work. With a very simple instructions. Eight rounds. Touch gloves. Let's go, J80. Let's look at the tail of the tape for this fight, Doug. Yeah, they match up pretty well. Rashidi, the younger man, he's two inches taller and just has a very slight reach advantage. You ready? You ready? Ring the bell, start the fight. There you go, Jay. Ring the bell. We're ready to go. Eight rounds of action. Rashidi Ellis in the white, taking on Marco Antonio Lopez 
in the green, white, and red. Eight rounds of action coming your way. BDL is with an interesting, I, I, I want to say they're trunks, but they're technically trunks. Well, they are. I mean, th that's something Hector Camacho would approve of or DeMarcus Without a Qualley. doubt. <laughs> Without a doubt. Interesting story about Ellis. He was actually signed by Golden Boy after Oscar De La Hoya dropped by the camp of Canelo Alvarez for the Cotto fight. And he basically said, who are you and where have you been all my life? And he gave the green light to <laughs> Golden Boy matchmaker Robert Diaz to sign him. And he's now a Golden Boy boxer. Well, he's... In Lynn, Massachusetts, that's where he was born and raised, in Rashidi Ellis, nicknamed Speedy as an amateur because he would come in and throw a million punches per round, as his trainers were telling me. said this kid just wouldn't stop throwing punches when they would tell him, save some up, be more selective, be smart with your punches, he'd go in there and throw even more. So Speedy Rashidi Ellis started boxing at a young age at the Fighting Chance Foundation in Boston run by... His trainer, Rivera Boxing, actually a, a program that has gyms in Bayamon, Florida, and Boston, getting kids off the streets in those three cities. Rashidi Ellis, 14 and 0. You're right, Steve. He was anxious just to get yep. into the ring. Saw him walking around the hotel yesterday. Like, hey, how you doing, Rashidi? Like, I'm ready to go now. I'm ready to go now. Like, you got to weigh in first. <laughs> I like what I see so far. I like the jab. He pushes off with his back foot and really gets some pop at the end of that jab. Marco Antonio Lopez started boxing as a professional in 2007. One of the fights that stands out, and he, he lost to Felix Verdejo in 2015 in Puerto Rico, a fifth round stoppage. Also went to Japan, took on Takahiro. Oh, lost in 10 rounds. Takahiro was a two-division title holder at uh, 122 pounds and 126 pounds, I believe. Looking very confident is Rashidi Ellis. Brand new T-Mobile Arena, the second fight of the afternoon. Nine fights on the Golden Boy Promotions card. Had five on Friday night. 14 fights total being brought to you by Ring TV Live. Final seconds of the opening round. Scheduled for eight in Las Vegas. Second round of action coming your way. Bethel Duran, Steve Kim, and Doug Fisher on ringtvlive.com. This one brought to you by The Ring. Also, make sure you download the Tecate Bold Punch app available for your smartphone. Rashidi Ellis, 14-0, started boxing as a professional in 2013. And you mentioned, Steve, 2014. He just upped it up. Like, how many fights did he have Ten that year? fights. That literally means every six weeks you're going. Well, none of them went past more than four rounds. He went the distance once in 2014. When you're going two rounds, one round, KOs, barely breaking a sweat. What's, what's wrong with doing 10? Tell you what, I don't see a, a lot of evidence of ring rust. No. Oh. Well, he's been in camp with Canelo, getting a lot of rounds in there. I think that experience served him well. I would have to imagine you're in with Canelo. You have to be um, defensively sharp, technically sharp. You want to be as elusive as possible, and I'm seeing that. Now, of course, Lopez isn't throwing a whole lot either. It's not like he has to worry about that much. But he looks sharp. The reflexes don't look dulled at all to me. Canelo bringing in Ellis. Try to duplicate the speed that Amir Khan has. I don't know if he has Amir Khan's speed, but he is fast. And he is aptly nicknamed. To try. <laughs> try to emulate. That's right. That's speed from Amir Khan. Speed and power later on tonight at the new T-Mobile Arena. Khan and Canelo. Go to CaneloKhan.com. 
Ellis in the white, looking very confident, very calm also, effective punches. He's really digging to the body in this round. Lopez loft around the middle. Now I can see why guys are making sure when you take a fight with Rashid Ellis. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> oh, let me look at the film. Okay. Uh, I changed my mind. <laughs> the, flu, the flu just mysteriously hits with Rashid Ellis' opponents the last couple of times. Ellis wearing those big white gloves. The Reyes gloves. Body work, digging in. Good. This is exactly what Doug Fisher was saying. And Lopez just covering up the veteran. And like, okay. See why they call him Speedy. There's some pop. He's not just speed. There's some power there. When he when he plants his feet and digs to the body the way he does, he's he's landing with authority. Final seconds of the round. Schedule for eight. Third round, scheduled for eight. Bethel Duran, Doug Fisher, and Steve Kim. This round is brought to you by Ring Magazine. Make sure you pick up your latest copy. Doug Fisher, the editor of ringtv.com. He also contributes to the Ring Magazine. You can see some of the best of Dougie's mailbag in the magazine. That's why I like reading your mailbags twice, because I always skip something. I read it on Mondays and Fridays. <laughs> then when it's in the magazine, it's like, oh, a little refreshing. Yeah, that guy was out of it. It's kind of like the, the best stuff from the previous month or two. It's also like when you, you know, download Steve Kim's podcast. You listen to him on the plane over here, and you realize that you and Mario Lopez have good chemistry, man. You know, and, and me and Gabe Montoya, we have gotten a lot of people through SIG alerts throughout Southern California. It's just a public service that we have. You know, guys, looking at this, there's no doubt Speedy Ellis has a lot of tools, a lot of speed, a lot of quickness. Reminds me a lot of another Golden Boy boxer that we've seen quite often in the last year, Keandre Gibson. Yes. Similar style. Yeah. And athleticism, Ooh. quickness, reflexive. Keandre Gibson coming off a nice victory at the Blasco Theater in downtown Los Angeles. You can go back and look at that on Ring TV Live. And Beto, he's another kid uh, Canelo Alvarez has brought in when they need a speedy look. A kid with a lot of athleticism and hand speed. Keon gets a lot of work that way as a sparring partner. In fact, he was brought in last year by Freddie Roach prior to the Pacquiao Mayweather fight. Also sparring with Canelo, Curtis Stevens, who will be on the pay-per-view. He was brought in to spar with Canelo Alvarez for the second time in his career. And Curtis Stevens takes on undefeated Patrick Teixeira, the Brazilian, and the first fight on the pay-per-view card. That'll be a little bit after 6 o'clock Pacific time. Yeah, this is a pay-per-view card where you don't just order it and then watch it like around 8 o'clock, you know, Pacific time. You want to watch this when from the very beginning because the first fight, Stevens to Shara, that's a that's, that's Doug, a can't-miss barn burner. Doug, me and you have sat through or a lot Or at least of, something dramatic is going to happen. We have sat through a lot of Butterbean, Mia St. John, and Ivan Coldwell. <laughs> I, I think tonight is a welcome, is a welcome reminder of what boxing can be. I still say, Doug, to this day, the best uh, undercard or pay-per-view top to bottom of Revenge of the Rematch is April yeah, 19, those old Don King cards in the early to mid 90s when Mike Tyson was incarcerated and Julio Cesar Chavez was the top yeah. dog of the kingdom. And um, what Don did was really wise. He had a huge stable and he just stacked it. But he, he didn't just put named fighters in there with anybody. He, he made them fight each other. So you had the revenge, the the, re, the rematches, you had Star Spangled Glory. Um, Star Spangled Glory. That was one of them. No one could name oh. a car yeah. quite like the king. Nobody yeah. could make it hard for an announcer either. Star Spangled Glory. <laughs> Say but that. You, but you, you you saw stuff like Felix Trinidad against uh, an undefeated Yuri Boy Compass or an undefeated Obacar. Ellis living up to his nickname with his hand speed and reflexes and showing some nice accuracy and some defense as well, landing one, two combinations. Touches Lopez to the body. Lopez is either just in defensive mode or he's throwing punches that catch Ellis on the gloves or miss entirely.
fourth round of action, scheduled for eight, Rashidi Ellis in the white against Marco Antonio Lopez from Tlaxcala, Mexico, in the green, white, and red. This round brought to you by Yip TV. Body work again from Ellis, really digging into that body the last couple of rounds. His athleticism, he can do a lot. He can do things that yeah. are not textbook. He can lead with power shots. He can lead with the hook. He could lead with the straight right. But I think it's best when he works everything off his jab. Yeah, and Doug, you take a look at the record, 14-0, 11 stoppages. As he goes up the ladder here, we're going to find out if those knockouts or this record is really more a function of matchmaking. I get the sense he's a pretty hard hitter. He could stop you in your tracks. I don't know if he has real concussive power. And a guy like Lopez, I think, is very useful in this regard. He's been in there with world-class talent. But guys like Roman, Felix Verdejo, Takao, and Kevin Mitchell, really their best days were at 130 to 135. I want to see how he fares against more legitimate 140 and 147 pounders. And you mentioned it for Marco Lopez, his last fight at 146. Before that, he was in that 135 to 139 range. Yeah. So going up in weight, and you can see around the belt. Yeah, he wouldn't make the cover of muscle and fitness, Beto. <laughs> There's no arguing that. When you watch Ellis box, it's not just speed and reflexes and athleticism. He's got that flashiness yeah. when he drops combinations. Does that thing where it's a jab and then the straight right. He lands the right and then he brings it back up kind of high, you know, like a like like a whip, like he's saying ole or something like that. Ole. Yeah. Um, but there, you see the showmanship. And when you wear trunks like that, when that you have the, the, the really Hector Camacho senior trunks, that means you want to yeah. put on it. You want to be flashy in there. Another great fighter that used to wear trunks like that, one of my personal favorites. Sharpe Mitchell? Sharpe Mitchell and another guy to D.C., Mark Too Sharp oh, Johnson. Oh, yeah, he did. Too oh, Sharp. Yeah, that's, that's right. one of the best boxer punchers I've ever seen. And I agree with you. If you wear trunks of this nature, you better be fast, flashy, and athletic. You got yeah, You got to be a bit of a showman. And you get the sense that, that that's part of his personality. Yeah. Just his ring entrance, just walking to the ring. He, he's, he's beaming. He likes the attention. He likes being under those lights. He likes fighting on TV. And when I'm, what's going to be, we're, we're midway through this eight rounder. What's going to be interesting to me is if he tries to close the show, if he gets this guy hurt. Um, that's really the icing on the cake when you want to be a showman, is if you can get the stoppage. Final seconds of the fourth round. It's scheduled for eight between Ellis and Lopez at the brand new T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. CaneloCon.com. That's where you want to go to buy the undercar the action for your phone, for your computer your mobile device, CaneloCon.com. We're inside the brand new T-Mobile Arena. First ever sporting event being held this afternoon. A few weeks ago, it was Guns N' Roses. Here, we get Canelo Con. What more do you need on this Saturday on Cinco de Mayo weekend? A few fans have found their way into the arena. And you know, you're a diehard if you're showing up at 2.30. You're even more of a diehard if you actually sit in your seat at this time of day. Appreciate it. Look, diehard fans, and those of you that are watching right now are looking at Rashidi Ellis dominate Marco Antonio Lopez. Ellis in the white. Thank you for joining us on ringtv.com. Keep those tweets coming. Do see them on Ring TV Live. Use that hashtag. Tony Zambrano, see you there. Appreciate you joining us on this Saturday afternoon. And if you're in L.A., it's, I heard it's raining, so what more do you need? We do need the rain. That's good news. And right now it's raining body shots uh, on Ooh, Lopez. Nice. That's the one thing I do like about uh, Ellis. He is willing to sit down on his heels and really spin and turn with those left hooks to the body. Again, I think at the upper levels of the sport, as he faces a higher caliber of opponent, Doug, I get the sense he's not going to ice guys with one shot. It will be more through attrition and his overall speed. Now, he probably doesn't have world-class power, but I think his speed is definitely world-class. Rashidi Ellis with 11 KOs in his career. He's 14-0. His last four fights have ended via the KO. And it's an interesting question, though, Steve. How was that matchmaking yeah. for him kind of opponents? Not much film that you can find in Rashidi Ellis from 2014. 
but he has the look. <laughs> and we got the speed. And Marco Lopez is feeling the effect on the left side of his body. <laughs> Lopez from Flaxcala, Mexico. Rashidi Ellis trained by the Rivera brothers. And they were playing some oh, reggaeton and as he was getting his hands taped. Ellis bumping along like, like wait a minute, you, you speak Spanish, you understand? He, his bro the trainers are Puerto Ricans. He's like, nah, but you know, I understand the beat. I like that. I'm like, wait, you're the fighter. Can't you get your own music right now? <laughs> he was outnumbered. He had that daddy Yankee going. <laughs> and that's in the, in the faint background, you can hear the Rivera brothers. Is he talking? He is talking, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. He's answering his corner? Yeah. He responded to his corner in the middle of the round. Good student, I guess. Ten oh. seconds to go in the fifth round. It's scheduled for eight. Ellis Lopez in Las Vegas. Make sure you go to CanelloCon.com. Buy the pay-per-view. Beautiful left hook to the body from Ellis. There's a right to the body from Ellis, a left hook. He touches in between these power shots. He just sort of touches him, teases him a little bit, makes him uh, raise or lower his guard, and then he nails wherever his opponent is unprotected. Doug, looking ahead, and you do some matchmaking of young fighters, and you think, what would be a good boxing after dark type fight? What would be a good mixture of styles? Now, uh, I wouldn't make it yet, given the fact that Speedy Rashidi has not fought really all that much. Had one fight last year. You know what would be a great contrast of speed versus power? And I, and I would consider this, let's say, in about three fights. Rashidi Elias against the mean machine, Kavalishka. Ooh, wow. <laughs> You well, like him, don't you? I, I really do. I think the Mean Machine has natural power, but I don't know if he's faced the athleticism. I, he just recently knocked out Prentice Brewer a couple of months ago. Uh, Rashidi Ellis, my, my philosophy is this. If you're a young fighter, at least during 30, 40 years ago when records weren't nearly as protected, you were expected to face tough guys. In fact, they wanted you to have a loss or two before you fought for a title because if right. you had an unbeaten record, it meant you probably weren't tested enough. Right. Really? That yes. was the theory back then? Yeah, yeah that was the saying. That, you know, show me a, an undefeated fighter and I'll show you somebody who yeah. hasn't been tested, yeah. hasn't been, been in tough enough. I mean, Beto, you go back to the days of Teddy Brenner, who may be the greatest matchmaker of whoever lived during his days at the Madison Square Garden. Uh, the Garden did not have house fighters. He made fights, and he, ha he had fights specifically with two philosophies. Number one, I got to sell tickets with this. And number two, is it a fight that I would buy? And if it didn't fit that criteria, uh, he was not into making guys 50 and 0. That, that was not his. Well, gig. particularly if they didn't have an entertaining style. Yeah. <laughs> the famous story of uh, Teddy Brenner actually, uh, in the middle of a fight, Larry Merchant told me this. He actually went from his seat near press row, slunk across the other side of the ring, and told this fighter, uh, if you don't get your hands moving and start punching, you will not get paid. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't do that these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Rashidi Ellis, is, I don't know if you he heard you, Steve. Yeah. He wants his paycheck. Well, no, he's been earning his money. He's been fine, and so has Lopez. He's played his role well, too. Recommended reading for anyone is a book from Teddy Brenner, Only the Ring Was Square. I think every boxing fan should read that. Only the Ring Was Square. On it. Right hand from Rashidi Ellis, picking up the pace with those overhand right here in the sixth round. It's scheduled for eight. Lopez starting to feel the wear of those body shots from earlier rounds. Every breathing from the Mexican fighter. And I think this is the way, Doug, he's going to score stoppages uh, moving forward. Soften him up to the body. Just chipping, chipping away, keep swinging that axe real quickly, and eventually just break a guy down to the body and then overwhelm him with speed over the top. Rashidi Ellis, Lynn, Massachusetts, where he was born and raised, right outside of Boston. Looking good in this fight against Marco Antonio Lopez. Very 
crazy sport. You go to, you're undefeated, nobody's looking at you. You go spar, and all of a sudden you get a promoter. <laughs> <laughs> There's no blueprint in this business. No. Final seconds of the six. We'll be back with more from Las Vegas. Ellis Lopez on the night of Canelo Khan. Seventh round of action. This one brought to you by Ring TV. Beth Durant, Doug Fisher, and Steve Kim. At the brand new T-Mobile Arena. Took two years to complete. And if you're coming to this fight, if you're gonna come to a fight in the future, it is very cool outside. It's not one of those places where you just show up for the arena, get in. No, there's two acres of different restaurants, bars, entertainment for you to go and enjoy right next to the Monte Carlo and in between the Monte Carlo and the New York, New York hotels across the street from MGM. Very walkable, very cool, just a good vibe. And I can only imagine later on in the afternoon when Canelo and the Khan fans are walking up holding their Mexican and British flags, how cool it's going to be. Because yesterday we were at the weigh-in and the fans were going loud. It was fun. Even though a couple sprinkles never deterred anybody. Very cool. And make sure you go to the... They got their bold punch app and download it, and you can see the videos from all the coverage we've had this week that started with the grand arrivals on Tuesday. It's Derby Day also. A lot of good sporting events going on in Las Vegas, but you, you can feel it. You know, Canelo Khan, you know, when well, it was first announced, Beto, mm, but now? I'll say this, last night hanging out, uh, obviously just drinking milk into the wee hours. Of course. Uh, uh, I saw the legendary Pernell Whitaker. Oh. He was hanging out at the lobby bar. Uh, walking by, always seems like he's having a good time. Adrian Broner. Did not really <laughs> want to ask where he was going. <laughs> you know, there actually is. What is he about? He's about what? He's about billions. Okay, just making sure. Or bowling. And, you know, uh, Zab Judah was hanging around the yep. premises. You see a lot of boxing people. I saw Winky, right? Yeah. Winky, really? Yeah, in the media center. I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah. He's a great golfer now. Yeah. Living in I've Orlando. Heard. Plays a green golf game. Also, Evander Holyfield, Lennox Lewis will be in the building. Roberto Duran with the new movie, Hands of Stone. I finally got to meet my uncle. No, I'm not related, but I just told people. <laughs> well, the mother is Mexican. <laughs> that's what he yeah, told me. I remember that. Uh, that. That's what I told him. I was like, oh, you know, I'm a Duran. He's like, are we related? I was like, no, you're Panamanian. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You <laughs> should have said yes. <laughs> that's a wrong answer. He's like, I'm like, you're Panamanian or Mexican. He's like, no, I got Mexican <laughs> mom. I was like, oh, well, in that case, what's up, Theo? How you doing? Rashidi Ellis with the Mexican colors on his trunks. Taking on the Mexican from Tlaxcala, Marco Antonio Lopez. And it's been a complete shutout. Rashidi Ellis dominating this fight, a game Antonio Lopez, but it's just been all Ellis the entire fight. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though, Lopez has finally got his hands moving in this round seven. I think his, his strategy was uh, for Ellis to punch himself out in the first five or six rounds and then try, try to make a final round's push. He's trying, not succeeding.
final round that you see Rashidi Ellis in the white taking on Vic Marco Antonio Lopez. The two fighters are going to come up, touch gloves. Eighth and final round. And guys, I'm going to ask for your scorecards <laughs> because it's technically we have to do it. Because <laughs> I see you guys working that, that iPad. So let's go. Let's get the scores up. You know, as the late great Chick Kern would say, you could call this fight in Braille. I have it going into the last round. 70 to 63, a shutout for Speedy Rashidi Ellis. And I see it the same, Steve. Seven rounds to zip, Rashidi Ellis. You can call this one in Braille. Uh, Chick had a million of them, yes, Beto. He, he did. really did. Nice font right there. Graphics group getting it up there on the screen right away. Very nice. Chiron, good work up there. Mrs. Ms. Gonzalez typing away, getting that Chiron. Ted Spears, everybody involved with our crew. Will Wright, our director, everybody else, even the people that are yawning. Don't worry about it. You're watching Rashidi Ellis, Marco Antonio Lopez. <laughs> Good time. A great job by our Ring TV live crew all week long. Make sure you go to the Tecate Bowl Punch app, download it, and see their work. Overhand right landed by Lopez. And also CanelloCon.com to buy the pay-per-view for tonight. Amir Khan, Saul Canelo Alvarez, David Lemieux, Glenn Tapia, Patrick Teixeira, Curtis Stevens, and two good Mexican-American fighters, Mauricio Herrera against undefeated Frankie Gomez. You know, Beto, you talked about this a couple of rounds ago, how basically being a sparring partner led to him being on this card and being a Golden Boy Promotions fighter. That's why experiences like that are so key for young fighters. Uh, first of all, I, I've said for a long time, when you're about 20 fights in or less, sometimes these sparring sessions are going to be tougher than any fight you have. It's kind of a rite of passage. You're expected as a young prospect to be in the camps of better-known marquee fighters. And really, that's how you learn. That's part of the learning process here. And for... Speedy Ellis, bottom line, if he's never in that camp, we don't know where his career is right now. Fighting club shows in the Northeast. There's your answer. <laughs> I mean, there's some guys who've made careers out of sparring, haven't they? Yo, oh, absolutely. I remember the Weaver triplets for years were great gym fighters. Uh, you look at a guy like, there's a heavyweight whose name escapes me right now that we knew pretty well, Doug, uh, fought everybody, and he could never get quite over the top. Um, Harris, I think was his name. Maurice Harris. Maurice Harris. Wait, didn't David Riddell get a house? From Manny Pacquiao. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Riddell is one of those guys, was Manny, pa M Manny Pacquiao's chief sparring partner, and also sparred with the late Diego Corrales and Joel Casamayor, and any world class, you know, featherweight to junior welterweight that resided in Southern California. And Ray Beltran was another guy who's actually broken through to have a bit of a career, but he was another guy that if you needed good work between 35 and 47, uh, dial him up. They go the distance, and for the first time in his career, Rashidi Ellis goes eight rounds. I look good doing it. Good young fighter out of Lynn, Massachusetts. And we come back, we'll get the final decisions from the brand-new T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas on Ring TV Live. And there you see Rashidi Ellis waiting on the decisions from them. Let's go to our ring announcer, Mark Krisky. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a round of applause once again for these combatants after eight rounds of super, welt, well, super welterweight action. We go to the judges' scorecards, and all three judges score the fight. 80 to 72, 80 to 72 and 80 to 72. He entered the ring undefeated, and he still leaves the ring with a perfect record of 15 wins, zero losses. Your winner by unanimous decision, Rasidi Ellis. Rashidi Ellis improves the 15 and oh, goes the distance against tough Mexican Marco Antonio Lopez. He got rounds. That only helped him as his career progressive for the Golden Boy fighter. Let's look at some highlights from this fight. Ellis was fast. He was sharp. He was accurate. Worked a nice, hard, snappy jab. Was always in control of, of the distance of this fight. Always in control of the pace. And really, just he looked untouchable for five or six rounds. I think he slowed down a little bit, Steve, in round yeah. seven and eight. Round eight, I, I, could, I could visibly see 
he was a little bit fatigued, but he held his form very yeah, and, well. And that this is a learning experience, first time going the eight round distance, and it's a bit of a learning process. I think this is only his first fight in about 13, 14 months, and I think it was a good test for him. Got some rounds in, shook some rust off, and now what we see where he goes from here, Golden Boy will most likely keep him busy for the next couple of months, and his management told me yesterday uh, that if Canelo Alvarez comes out victorious tonight, they'd like to be on his undercard in September. So he's got plans. I'm pretty sure Golden Boy, with the rate that he's going right now, would like to use him sooner than later. Rashid Ellis, Lynn, Massachusetts, improves the 15 and 0. Our next fight coming your way is going to feature Lamont Roach Jr.